Hello guys, it's me Simu Orahara and today we're gonna talk about the fifth episode. For me, this is the best episode I have ever seen until now. For me, it was better than the first episode simply because of the events that were in it. As I said before guys, I do think this episode is the real start of Bleach anime, especially the second half of the episode. It was something magical. The stars of this episode were many, Ace Notch, Zaraki, and sure, the first star is the old man, Yamamoto, as well as the flashback of Sasakibi. I won't talk about the first half of the episode, Rit Turpiakia, because I'm going to do a special video to him about his fight against Ace Notch. I will talk about what followed that fight. Finally, we know who was fighting Rukia, and she is meaningless. I thought it was either Giselle or her, and I went for Giselle, but it turned out she was actually Minas. Secondly, and as I told you in my previous video about the spoilers of the fifth episode, it was clear that the studio would show seconds for every fight that Zaraki fought against this generator. And this is what happened, Zaraki's intervention was majestic. Imagine with me that all the caption were terrified. Why? Because they were unable to use Bankai to fight the generator. Except for Zaraki who was enjoying fighting everyone who stood in front of him. Starting with Jerome who was able to turn into a huge monster that kills his opponents with his voice. And Zaraki just cut him in half with just one stroke of his sword. The funny thing about this guy... <laughs> He was defeated by Zaraki using just his own hand, and he just removed his throat. The only generator who Zaraki had some difficulty with him was Lloyd, and this was clear because Lloyd copied Zaraki's power that he had at that moment. So all Zaraki had to do in the end is to raise his power and overcome his copy, and that's what he did. That's why I say that what happened to Zaraki at the end of the episode will not change anything from the fact that Zaraki was able to defeat three Shinraichi without using Shikai or Bankai, while the other were crying because their Bankai was stolen. And we move to the greatest events of this episode, guys. When the invasion begins, the poor Hisagi has made this call uh, and he didn't know that the one standing in front of him is actually Sakibi's killer. And this call ability in fact is terrifying ability guys and we can even describe it as being similar to Yami or Girard's ability. The more they do something, the stronger they get. And this is what happened to Driscoll, the more he kills, the powerful he gets. And I don't think that Hisagi's fate would have been Sasakibi's if it wasn't for the legendary intervention of the old man Yamamoto. Imagine with me that the arrow with which Driscoll killed Sasakibi, the old man removed it with his bare hand. In the manga, Yamamoto appeared to be looking for Sasakibi's killer. So I don't know if he was looking for Sakibi's killer for real or did he meet Driscoll by chance. Because here, as soon as he saw the medal uh, and uh, Driscoll talked about that he stole it from a vice captain, we have seen the features of surprise on Yamamoto's face. But whether the old man met Driscoll by chance or deliberately, Yamamoto was happy inside his soul that finally he would be able to avenge his vice captain. And it is noticeable here that the power of the Bankai decreases a lot when it's used by someone other than the real user. Even the method of the use is different. For example, when Driscoll launched the Bankai, we noticed that his attacks were different. Moreover, the attack in itself did not harm the old man. And here we will see the flashback of Sasakibi. First, I thank the studio because they didn't remove anything from this flashback. On the contrary, they added some small details that clarified several things, such as Sasakibi used the Bankai in front of Yamato in one of the Rikongai areas. We also saw Sasakibi's use of Bankai in front of Yamato. And I really like the way Sasakibi used the Bankai. It's the opposite of the risk call. He can reshape Thunder Pillars using his sword, which makes him almost enveloped in the thunder and also gives him great speed to advance towards the opponent and attack him with full power. 
It is true the Bankai was not able to harm or pose any danger to Yamamoto. We are talking here about the strongest man in the Soul Society. But the Bankai has left a mark on Yamamoto's body or forehead. The second scar that made him change his name to Ginryusai. And I really liked the addition they did. How part of the old man's name that is real is actually because Yamamoto saw that well of flowers that were in his garden and so he decided to make his new name to Ginryusai. The flashback was over and we know some of Yamamoto's past and his relationship with Sasakibi. And after that we have seen one of the greatest scenes with a magical host. The old man like if he was asking for forgiveness from Sasakibi because how his Bankai who spent centuries honing it became in the hands of someone like Driscoll to use it with this weakness. The power of the Bankai was so weak when Driscoll used it it didn't even affect the old man's haori. But the last one, Yamamoto, with one stroke of Ryujin Jaka, it made Driscoll a skeleton. I really like the scene of Yamaji in Hisagi, because Hisagi, guys, is the last one who saw and spoke with Yamamoto before he gets to Yuhaba. The old man Soriatsu's explosion and how he jumped to the sky, it was a fantastic shot. It injected feelings of positivity and motivation into all the Gute 13 members and made them return to the battlefield. On the other hand, we saw this terrifying scene and I still need some clarification from the enemy to resolve this matter. Is it Roid who did this to Zaraki? Or actually Yuhabach. Because, because guys, we don't know for sure when exactly Yuhabach went to Aizen. Was it right after the start of the invasion or after he defeated Zaraki? Frankly, many facts indicate that Royd was the one who defeated Zaraki due to his power uh, we saw in his fight against Yamamoto. Therefore, we need some scenes to show us who defeated Zaraki. And so the episode ended with the old man's coming in front of Yuhabach. Yamamoto said that it has been 1000 years since their first meeting. And now there is the second round of their battle. I do think this fight will be one of the iconic, strongest, majestic battles in the history of the anime. So guys, tell me your opinion about uh, this episode and see you in my next video.